road. <laughs> He's off roading. <laughs> uh, you think he got the trailer airborne right then? Watch out, there's a roadkill in the middle. All right, well, sorry for the, all the detours, but I think we're finally ready to get. What was the first leg of that? Was it taking us up? Uh... Okay, well then we'll actually uh, go this way because it's a straighter shot. Love you. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a general warning or it's called a mill uh, malfunction indicator lamp. There's really nothing else to watch for. And squeeze out to the middle and wait. Oh, well, we can go. So how's the scoot feel with all that extra weight on it? Yeah. Mine's a little top heavy because I got... Yeah, me too. We can probably uh, readjust our packs a little bit once we get to the hotel tonight, figure out a better way to make it work. That route has us going all the way up Fry up there, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, it ends up up there on the north side of uh, 99, uh, and I was just trying to find a... Uh, oh, don't forget to cancel your signal. Um, yeah, no worries. I was trying to keep us off the main highways until we uh, can get out of town. My signal worked that time. Hmm. It's a dirty corner, watch out. There's no cross stop here, so we got to watch out for fast traffic. Uh, I'm clear, but it's a blind of hill, so watch out. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we got 17 miles to Highway 43. Okay.
Got traffic on the right. All right, I'm gonna talk to the camera for a minute, so just ignore me. All right, everybody. Well, welcome to uh, Friday morning, uh, day one of the Arkansas ride out from Marshall, Texas. Uh, I'm following uh, behind the Mad Max Zuma here. That's awesome. With the Bob trailer behind it. And uh, we're going to head uh, out of Marshall, Texas, up toward uh, Tallahine, Oklahoma, and hopefully not have too much of this nonsense. We shall find out. be taking uh, slower roads. We're going to end up on the main uh, drag here for a little while on 59 and then we're going to end up getting up to uh, some of the smaller little side highways that get us uh, across the Red River into Oklahoma and that's uh, the fun stuff where you get uh, twisty highways and slower roads and a whole lot less traffic. And now we know why all the uh, sirens Got a structure fire here. That's no good. Can't tell if it's the Verizon store. No, it's somebody behind it. Is it a car fire? What do we got? Yeah, it's a car fire. Wow, looks like a structure fire. Got a <laughs> yeah, car fire. Things are just burning up right there in the parking lot. That's not good. Mustang. Uh, you could uh, help out with your fire extinguisher. Car fire. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about his fire extinguisher on his uh, Bob trailer. I asked him if he'd ever had to use it, and he said, no, it's not really for me. It's for the other people. And there would have been one of those. That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably late uh, late 2000s, like 2009. They've all been pretty much the same for a long, long time uh, with no real functional changes. They've changed the headlights on it and the gauge cluster uh, as they've gotten newer, but the motor is still the same. And that's an air-cooled motor on, the, uh, on that scoop. Uh, most of the scooters, including these 150s that we're on, are water-cooled, uh, but the, the Zuma is air-cooled. <laughs> He's already adjusting it, trying to get some air in the butt. <laughs> He's standing up and waggling around. I didn't ask him how far uh, that campground was that he stayed at last night, the National Wildlife Area, he said. I don't know where that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said he's three days out. This is his third day out on the road right now to get up here. Uh, so he, I don't know how many miles he's uh, ridden to get to, to here for this meet, but he was running around doing uh, camping on public lands for the last day or two. Louisiana somewhere. Wind noise is so much better now with the earplugs in. Much more enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, on the flats, he's pulling right along at 57. He's actually pulling away from me a little bit right now. So he's doing just a tick under 60 with that thing. That is impressive. No, he's a big guy. I didn't ask him how tall he is. I think he's probably 6'2", 
Good. <laughs> He's off-roading. <laughs> uh, you think he got the trailer airborne right then? Watch out, there's a roadkill in the middle. Yeah, it's the only thing about riding the shoulder over there is uh, every now and then you'll find stuff you don't like. Tire carcasses, wood, all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, we'll uh, get up over the top of this hill, see how the road looks, and scoot over for them. Yeah, I think we're good. Watch for debris and uh, berms to jump. <laughs> yeah, no twisties out here. I said no twisties out here, just flat and straight and boring as shit until we get to Oklahoma. Uh, Red River Bridge into Oklahoma. So technically about halfway through this right here is Oklahoma. And here's our uh, roadside picture stop. <laughs> we stopped a second to go to get gas uh, because uh, Trader's bike uh, petered out just before we got to the Oklahoma line. I'm going to do a quick photo op here and try not to get run over. We almost, almost made it to the border. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could have taken the Super Cub. I thought about it, but it's not as comfortable as the PCXs, and uh, its fuel range is more limited. You know. This line of traffic behind us is getting annoyed. <laughs> I'm sure that traffic behind us is getting annoyed. Oh well. There's nowhere for us to get off the shoulder and none of these uh, stretches are long enough for them to pass. Hey, a bunch more bikes. Cool. probably thinking, what are those maniacs doing out here on scooters? This is a rough road. <laughs> No, it's not too bad with the uh, upgraded shocks that I put on here. Now, the factory ones uh, would have been bottoming out through all that cool bridge. Uh, the rear ones were really bad on the, the factory spec. It was just too soft. Bottom out easy. Especially if you had extra weight. Yeah, exactly. Extra weight on the back did not help. That's rough.
Oh, really? Oh, well, hell, let's uh, let's stop here. Let me. Okay. Yeah, well, the bigger one holds a little better because it's not stretched to the limit. Holy shit, that guy's going too fast. Uh, I probably ought to get the uh, the large one, the extra sized. off-road uh, bikes for this. Yeehaw. Yeah, it feels good to get moving. It is humid. Oof. Ooh, a big rock. We should let all these cars go. situated again. Oh yeah, cooling off now finally. Thoughts about the what? The air hawk? Oh, dirt, yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah. Smooth throttle, smooth brakes, and uh, you know, we'll just we'll be going slow, probably only ten miles an hour or so on it. And uh, if you have to, you training wheel it with your feet. You know, you just kinda hang your your feet off to the side and if the bike starts to go down you just dab a foot you know and there's the water Should have brought my pack raft. Yeah, like I've got room for any more crap on this bike. I've already got way too much stuff. I brought everything and the kitchen sink this time. I literally did. I have a kitchen sink. I didn't bring the fire pit though. I figured wherever we're gonna camp, I probably don't wanna start a big fire, so. Got your ride signal on. <laughs> Three strikes, you're out. <laughs> Up on top of the dam here. They've got a hydro dam here, if I remember right. The hydro power plant. Unfortunately, my uh, my 360 camera is not going to get to see a good view of the lake because it's on the wrong side of the bike.
Yeah, doesn't it? It's amazing. Wow, check out that hill in front of us and the tree line. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm just going to run into a wall of trees there. Yep. Big hole on the right, watch out. This PCX is doing 120.3 miles to the gallon so far in this tank. Yeah, it's uphill where the little Zuma really struggles. He drops down to about 46 to 48 up some of these hills. He said that uh, in some of the real steep stuff over in the Ozarks, uh, he slows down to like 20 up some of those hills. Yeah. Oh, he's stopping. I think he's going to let everybody get off here. Watch out, this is gravel and there's a drop off. What's that? I think so. So watch for the uh, step up here and uh, traffic is clear on this side so far. Ugh. Dogs on the left, but they seem to be uh, minding their manners. Oh, I guess we're going left. Bethel. I think my butt's finally getting used to this seat. I'm not really a uh, saddle sore right now. Yeah, I'm shifting around every, you know, five minutes or so, but I don't have any real nasty pressure points. Oh, he's struggling. <laughs> 37. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Now just imagine the cannonball with uh, people competing on 50cc scooters like the little Yamaha C3 or a Zo yeah, Zuma 50. Imagine these hills on those bikes. You'd be slowed down to 15 or 20 miles an hour if you're lucky. I mean, you might as well get out and run next to it. But people have done it. And I don't know if they 
finished the event or not, but I know that people have competed on 50 cc's. Wow. Thirty-five average, yes, that's right. <laughs> oh my god. So that's a twelve hour day. You just figure twelve hours. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so you're looking at like fourteen hour days right there. Oh man, at least. You gotta be a serious glutton for punishment. Yeah, yeah. Now uh, you gotta have giant brass cojones and uh, a whole lot of patience. Wow, that is gorgeous. Are your ears popping yet? Oh, you got the earplugs in, yeah. I didn't put the earplugs in. My ears are popping like crazy. Up, down, up, down. Okay, so here we are in the middle of uh, nowhere, Oklahoma, headed up toward Tallahena. We're on Indian Highway 144, and the one in front of us is also Indian Highway 144, according to the GPS. So we're not really sure. <laughs> so we stopped on the side of the road over here in the shade to uh, consult the GPS and uh, rest our bones for a few minutes grab something to drink, and uh, then we're going to hit the road again and head on into uh, Tallahena. And we're not sure if we're going to continue on uh, before we start looking for a campsite, but uh, we'll figure it out. I found a little turn-off uh, driveway of some kind here, and we're just uh, borrowing it. So, here's the bikes. Here's my two PCXs. I'm riding the white one. Evil Knievel's uh, riding the gray one. They're holding 
70 miles an hour on the highway uh, without any problem at all. 65, no trouble. 70 on the flats uh, with these new variators. Uh, it's, it's good. Uh, that one's topping out around 73, 74. This one's doing 71, 72 uh, with the uh, Dr. Pulley in there. That one's got the NCY. Uh, and there's the Mad Max Mobile. He's getting uh, 60, 60 miles an hour on the flats and the downhills with this little Zuma 125 with 34,000 some miles on it, 30,000 30, and something. Uh, and then, of course, the baby Bergman up here, the 200, he can do 75, close to 80. Uh, he's doing just fine. Uh, our fuel is doing well. We're, uh, we're getting 115 to 120 average uh, and easily, you know, 200 miles out of a tank before we start sweating it and looking for a fuel station. Uh, the Zuma is running out sooner, obviously, smaller tank, but he's got his own uh, jerry can right there. And uh, the Baby Berg has got 2.8 gallons of fuel, so he's he's hauling more than any of the rest of us. Uh, he's averaging somewhere around 80 to 85 miles to the gallon. So he's got a comfortable 200 mile range. We've got a reasonable 200 mile. Uh, not too bad. So anyway, I'm going to get something to drink saddle up and we're going to start riding again. Ooh, looks like this road might be a little rougher. Yeah, these are pretty steep. I'm sure he has it just pinned wide open. It's good for him to lead though because then he sets the pace and we don't leave him behind by accident. Oh wow, over to the left is gorgeous. Valley over there. Wow, that's pretty deep too. Woo we are way up here. I want to look at it, but I don't want to end up off the road. <laughs> the old saying, uh, you, you ride where you look, so be careful. I wonder how many belts he's gone through in his bike on the CVT. Running these hard runs, you know, just wide open up these hills that uh, choose through belt faster. High speed highway does too. That's right, yeah, the, the cub and the hunter cub uh, with that chain drive. Just lube the chain, and as long as you don't do something really stupid, you're probably never going to break that chain. Because they just 
Uh, yeah, on the Cub, right on the Cub, it's got that uh, gator over the chain, and it just keeps road grime and stuff off of it, uh, but it's not a totally sealed unit, so. Yeah, yeah, it does. What I've always thought would be a great high mileage, low maintenance uh, solution, but nobody has made it yet, would be something along the lines of these uh, PCXs, because these motors are very powerful for their size and they're very efficient, but the belt drive on it makes them less efficient. So put either a, uh, you know, a standard transmission on this thing or something like a DCT, a dual clutch uh, with a five or six speed box behind it, and then put that output to a one of those toothed Kevlar belts uh, so there's no slippage uh, and they're actually those are lower resistance than chains usually and there's no maintenance you have to tighten them every now and then but uh, there's no lube or anything like that and that would be just enormously efficient you could probably get 160 to 170 miles to the gallon out of a bike like that my helmet one way and look the other <laughs> so I can get the camera out there uh, a little bit I've got a uh, GoPro Karma the uh, you just put the hero camera on the front of it and uh, it's got the little first-person view uh, controller, but it's not goggles. It's a uh, little, you know, it's, I think, six or seven inch uh, LCD screen. I've backed a couple of Kickstarter projects uh, for little selfie drones and stuff. Uh, there's the AirPix and another one. I can't remember what the name of it was. Uh, but they're way late on delivery now. I think one of them is over a year late and the other one is six months late. All because of COVID over in China and, you know, just regular manufacturing screw-ups and they just didn't project things right, but that's all right. Uh, but they're relatively cheap, you know, a couple hundred bucks or less and they're very small which is what i was looking for because i wanted something that uh had the ability to you know kind of follow me at low speed and they do have that they've got an ai in it that will track you uh so if you're you know riding or driving or whatever under 20 miles an hour they can keep up with you and track you um then uh, the little one, the selfie drone, uh, is not really made for in motion, but you just toss it up in the air and it self-stabilizes and you can give it gestures and it will circle pan around you and take panoramics. Uh, it's got, you know, a full 1080p camera and all that. So, uh, and they're cheap. I think they're only like a hundred bucks or something, but you know, they're way late. I wanted to take that on some of these rides, you know, and just, be able to get aerial shots to include in the video and things like that yeah yeah they've got a lot of good ai in their uh, software it's pretty impressive there was rumor that gopro was coming out with a new drone but they kind of just dropped out of the drone market completely uh, i guess they couldn't compete with dji and uh there was the, all the hubbub about uh you know everybody with drones has now got to register and uh, FAA got involved and everything else, so. Yes, exactly. And that's why I wanted the little selfie drones because they're so small, you don't have to worry about where you fly them, when you fly them, any of that. This is a fun road, minus the potholes.
Art dropped way back. I hope he's doing all right back there. Well, I gotta say, for not having much uh, riding and scooter experience, you're doing great on this trip. Ooh, big holes. Hey, ooh. Barely missed that one. I threaded right through the middle of two giant holes and I didn't hit any of them. <laughs> that was just uh, luck and a prayer. A <laughs> little bit of skill, mostly luck. <laughs> yeah, some of these uh, holes are down to the next layer of asphalt below it and that's a good three inch drop, which is all the suspension we have. The weird thing about the camera footage, uh, video footage, when you watch this later, there's no real depth or appreciation for the inclines. Uh, you lose elevation. The camera flattens everything out, so you can't really perceive the, uh, the inclines or anything in the recorded video. My mountain ride that I did uh, on my XT several years ago, I had a lot of that footage, and I was watching it afterwards going, well, where are all the hills? Where's all the stuff that I was riding? <laughs> oh, that was it. You just, you just can't see it on the camera. Right. Yeah, uh, with the GoPro, you can turn on speedometer, uh, GPS track, elevation or altitude. Uh, there's a bunch of different sensors you can turn on, but the problem with GoPro software is it has a default way that it arranges them. And if you don't like that arrangement, you can move it, but then every clip, you've got to do that same thing over and over and over again. It doesn't have any concept of safe position preferences. So. Uh, and then when you cut from one clip to the next, if the position isn't the same, then you get this big jump in your gauges in the, uh, in the output video, so it just looks funny. Yeah, even with as heavily loaded as we have these uh, PCXs, they're handling this stuff just great. I thought they might be a little tippy uh, on these slower corners, leaning in, they would want to fall in, but they're tracking fun. The tires have made a big difference uh, because those factory tires kind of sucked. tight switchback and people have ridden up and over that rail a few times they've knocked the signs down off the top of it <laughs> that's a bad day wow this is a 50 mile an hour road maybe right now back there hell no <laughs> has been hanging out in the back of the pack all day long. Get him up here so he can get some uh, camera time too. Yeah, I, I just brought him up. He's been hanging out back there in the back. Wave him up. Wave him up. Let him follow. Uh... Yeah, let him follow, Trader. Go ahead and go up a little bit. We got a, sl a slower zone coming. I'm just trying to get all of us in the frame. Now, all of us except me. 
The camera guy never gets in it. Okay, so I guess a uh, fuel or food stop here. Ooh, that pump's out of order. Yeah, go ahead and grab that one over there. I'll file in behind you. All right, so resuming the ride. Stop for provisions, so we've got water and whiskey and all kinds of good stuff. And now we're headed uh, further on to our Tallahina, and we're going to try to get part of the Tallahina Drive done and find a camping spot before it gets dark or before the sky unzips on us. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. We're thinking that the ride is only about an hour, uh, hour and change from where we are right now. So that means uh, we'll get in before sunset, but with clouds and possible rain, it will be dark a lot sooner. Yeah, it's raining over there. I see rain bands coming out of the clouds.
Potato Hill Vista. Cool. Stop and take a look. Oh, wow. That's nice. Yeah. So most people never think of Oklahoma having mountains, but yeah. there you go. Yeah, like you say, man, this side Hills, at least. Very big ones. Really? It's nice out here. The weather is awesome, feeling really good. As long as it doesn't start dropping rain on us. Ooh, don't fall off the cliff, dumbass. Panorama. We could just, you you could just hang some hammocks in the trees right there, camp out for the night. And I hope the weather is this cool tonight to sleep in. It'll be great. I hate sleeping when it's hot. And this time of year, you just never know what you're gonna get. This has gotta be low 70s right here.
Yeah, if I wanted to get into it and do some uh, engine modifications, you know, you can put a big bore kit on it, uh, a different head or different piston that's got slightly higher compression. Uh, you can get more speed out of them for sure. Uh, but when you do that, that's that's exactly it when you start pushing them out of their original performance envelope you're sacrificing reliability and at the very least you're sacrificing uh economy you know because more power means you're burning more fuel and uh whenever you start doing that you also have to upgrade the clutch you know there's a bunch of stuff that has to go with it oh wow look over to the right when you can oh that's gorgeous No, the, the 125 is the biggest uh, yet. I wish that uh, Honda would think about making like a 185 or a 200 or something. That would be great because then it would have just enough power uh, for highway duty, you know, comfortably or somewhat comfortably. almost bought a couple of groms for my son and I to play with, but that's essentially the same motor. It just has a, a clutched four-speed transmission instead of the uh, centrifugal clutch. Homer Johnson, Washita National Forest. Must be hiking trails right here because we got a pedestrian crossing. It doesn't look like a very well manicured trail. Last time I came through here was probably 15 years ago. They were doing some road work in certain sections of it, uh, but the up ahead, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 miles or so, uh, it's got kind of longer open stretches and I was tearing through here in my M5. Backrest is nice on these hills. <laughs> Just kind of leaning back into it. I've forgotten that it's just a bunch of bags. It's uh, actually a fairly comfortable backrest right now.
Lakes Vista. have a steep decline up here we got the truck notice saying truck use low gear I said we must have a really steep decline coming up because there was a truck sign on the side of the road said trucks use low gear keep your brakes from overheating you know Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, for trucks, because uh, you don't want to ride your brakes too long. If you ride your brakes too long, they overheat and start to fade.
Yeah, car, cars and trucks. Well, even on motorcycles, you don't want to ride your brakes for extended periods if you can avoid it, because you heat up the pads and uh, they start to X gas and yeah, they fade real bad. Yeah. I usually pump mine in, uh, you know, four to five second increments uh, and let them cool off. Must be stopping at one of the vistas here. Oh, that's nice. That's PCH. <laughs> Here, I'll help you get that up. We're a little weeble down the road, man. We're done, yep. we think. The ducks do it too. Yeah, yeah. we're almost there. Sir. We'll all sit around and uh, heat up our instant dinners and uh, drink some whiskey. I'm after that uh, honey, honey Jack Daniels or whatever that was. I'm gonna try that. Well, somebody got apple, I think. You got apple, and I got the honey something. I got a little bit of a. Try that out. Are you talking about the alcohol? Yeah. Talking about the alcohol? Yeah. I left the camera running this whole time. Hope I wasn't scratching my balls. Probably have 50 Boy Scouters at our camp down the road here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got a fire. I smell something. A couple of hills over. Oh, yeah, I see that. I smell something in the air over that way, upwind of us, though. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Side stand, yeah. Roro, not going in there. Hmm. They've got it closed up. Wonder what that's about. Okay, so we're officially uh, degenerates and lawbreakers. We skirted the gate. We're gonna camp by God. So now the exercise is uh, we look for something uh, that's somewhat secluded and uh, not in direct view of the road over here because bright colored tents, that's going to give us away. Ugh. 
running over sticks or something. I got a van over there. I hope that's nothing official. Normally, if I'm kind of planning on stealth camping, I'll bring a, uh, a camo net or something to throw over my uh, bike. I think that spot right there might be all right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. No, Try to get the bikes down low somewhere where they're not visible. Yeah. Yeah, they're in here on big bikes, GSAs, and yeah. You know. Are they? Nice. We're crashing their party. Yeah, I think that spot's good right there. We can sit. Take one more lap around, see if you see anything else you like. Yeah, we'll take a look. Yeah, we'll take a lap now. Take, take a spot. Look. Yeah, got a bunch of guys back here setting up. Adventure bikes, uh, all of them, GSs. Yeah, I think that's our spot right back there. This wouldn't be bad either. Think about this. 